use the following pattern to complete parts A and B below. We have 13 plus 39 equals 13 times 2 to the second power. 13 plus 39 plus 65 equals 13 times 3 to the second power. 13 plus 39 plus 65 plus 91 equals 13 times 4 to the second power. On both sides of the equation, you can see that each of these numbers has a factor of 13. So, what is an inductive generalization based on this pattern, where n is equal to the number of terms being added? So, to find an inductive generalization based on this pattern, we examine the pattern and derive a formula to predict the sum of the terms in terms of n. First, notice that each term has a common factor, and we talked about that. The common factor is 13. So we're going to divide each term in this sequence by the common factor out of the entire sequence. So we're going to divide 13 divided by 13, 39 divided by 13, 65 divided by 13, 91 divided by 13, and 13 times 4 squared divided by 13. Well, we end up getting 1 plus 3 plus 5, plus 7, which is equal to 4 squared. The variable n then represents the number of terms being added. So the sequence in the previous step has four terms being added. Thus, n squared is equal to 4 squared. Now remember that the common factor is 13. Therefore, the formula that predicts the sum of the terms is 13 times n squared. Now, based on the generalization in A, we want to find the sum of the sequence, 13 plus 39 plus 65 plus 91, all the way to plus 169. Now, to obtain the sum of the terms, we need to first identify which term in the pattern is 169. So, if we write out the sequence, again, here's our sequence, and then we can see that the following so we want to find the formula for the nth term of the sequence. So to simplify this process, we're going to first divide each term in this sequence by 13. So looking at this sequence, 13 divided by 13 is 1. 39 divided by 13 is 3. 65 divided by 13 is 5. And 91 divided by 13 is 7. So now we want to be able to find the nth term. Now, if you take a look, the term number for the first term is 1. The second term is 3. The third term is 5. The fourth term is 7. And therefore, the nth term is going to be the following. 2 times n minus 1. 2 times 4 is 8. Minus 1 gives us 7. 2 times 3 is 6. Minus 1 gives us 5. 2 times 2 is 4. Minus 1 gives us 3. And 2 times 1 is 2. Minus 1 gives us 1. So since the sequence was divided by 13 earlier, we want to multiply the formula for n that we got by 13. So therefore, we're going to take 13 and multiply it by this formula of 2n minus 1. So we're going to distribute the 13 to both terms. 13 times 2n is 26n, and 13 times minus 1 is minus 13. So now we have 26n minus 13. Thus, the nth term of the sequence is 13, 39, 65, 91 is equal to 26n minus 13. But now we want to set this formula equal to the given value of 169, which was the last term in this sequence here, so that we can find out what n is. So we're going to let 2n minus 13 equal 169. We're going to add 13 to both sides. We get 26n, which is equal to 182. And then we're going to divide both sides by 26. And therefore, n is equal to 7. So, now we want to use the formula that we found in part A, where we know that the sum is going to equal 13 times n squared to calculate the sum of the first 
seven terms. So we know that the sum is equal to 13n squared. We're going to plug 7 in because that's what we got for n. For, for n. 7 squared gives us 49, and 49 times 13 gives us 637. Therefore, the sum of the first seven terms is 637.